Welcome to Modern Art Blitz, our weekly show of the best, brightest, and boldest of contemporary art here in Los Angeles <laughs> and abroad. Oh, that was terrible, terrible, terrible. This is my lovely co-host, Lisa Derrick. Okay, you have so embarrassed me right now. I, this is Lisa Derrick, our co-host. I'm your host, Matt Gleason. In the sketcher seat, drawing our guests tonight, our intern, Aliza. And Aliza will be drawing, we have two great guests tonight from the uh, depths of the Los Angeles art scene as, uh, as is want. Uh, what do we call it, the Southern California art scene? Let's say Southern California. Because you know, like City of LA, like if you, don't, if you live in Inglewood, City of LA can't tell you what to paint. No. So well, no, they can't tell you what to paint the, anyway. We're Southland. We're we, the Southland. We are the Southland. We are From South the desert Riders. to the sea to all of Southern. Oh, that might be copyright. I was going to do my Jerry Dunphy, but From, well, that's to, to LA Insider, right? Oh, yeah. Or did yeah. you spend your whole life watching Chuck Henry on the Channel 4 News? No, I love Jerry Dunphy. <laughs> oh, well, let's I hear about your him. crush. Yeah, yeah, well. Did him, you ever have a Christine Lund haircut just to? No, but I'm, I'm kind of working on my Colleen Williamson here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Remember when she had the skunk spot for the long Yes, day? yes, Colleen Williams and the yeah. skunk spot, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, Chuck Henry was the, uh, more, more of a pigeon, I guess. <laughs> I, I actually saw the Channel 5 news team today. I was at Pride Los Angeles. Yeah. And they were on a trolley, and everyone was going five, five, five. It was great. At, at the KTM, Channel Five News. Yeah, KTLA. Did they have Hal Fishman's ashes with them? No, <laughs> but you know, KTLA is a very revo was a very revolutionary channel. Why? They, they had the first black anchor. Okay. And the first helicopter was to the Mississippi. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Weren't they the ones with the first mobile unit during yes. the SLA shootout? Yes. Are you sure it was Channel Channel Five? I don't know. I'm, we should, I'm asking. We should, but they were, you know what? Channel Could 5 channel rocks. Four. But speaking KTLA. of pioneering Inter innovations. Pioneering innovations, yes. This Wednesday marks a pioneering innovation in television. Oh, You're oh, going oh. to be making your series debut yes, we did on a, your network series we, debut. We did a network TV show on the Game Show Network. I, I'm the judge on Skin Wars Fresh Paint, hosted by RuPaul. Uh, Wednesdays at 10 this summer, beginning June 15th. And uh, this is 2016, in case you're watching us archived on youtube.com. It's a website. We're live at 5 every Sunday here at, here at dronebox.com. But yes, you're right. Thank you. It is pioneering you know, television for. Um, yes, I think it's, we should have some sort of contest here. A contest here? Here about the show. Like, if you, like, about your show oh yeah but there who couldn't who knows there could be lawyers from the network oh, saying no, yeah, no no you can't no, do that no. I, okay, I you know never we, mind. it's a union Innovation. shoot i don't know you know i know i know i know i just you know but but you it i'm very excited about this show i'm gonna i'm gonna be watching it you're well i hope you have your game show network yes on your cable aliza yes. I don't know what you, have. you don't they didn't give you a microphone you can, what? Just, you can just talk really loudly into my boobs. <laughs> you know, the fantasy of many is offered to the to the one. <laughs> just every Sunday. Just on Sundays. Just on so. Sundays, exactly. We have two great guests tonight. Later on the show. Oh, here you go. Here's your microphone. It's on, right? Foiled it's on. again. <laughs> we have two great guests tonight. Believe it or not, two. Two great guests. Two uh, handsome men. Two handsome men. Damn. Two charming devils. Uh, 
later in the show is going to be uh, Mark Stephen Greenfield. But right now, I want to introduce a legend of Los Angeles street art with few peers. Man one. <laughs> Man one. This way, just walk this way, right in. Cool. Huh? Did that, does it say that on your Facebook page? I guess. <laughs> if it doesn't, cool. it should. It's so, welcome good. to Modern Art Blitz. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, so uh, you are not only a street artist. Uh, do you prefer street artist, graffiti artist? How, what's what's the nomenclature? I just go by artist now. Artist. Yeah. You're an artist. Yeah. So you're, you're doing some. You're doing paint on canvas too. Paint on canvas. Sell paint out. On anything. Do people tell you you're a sellout when you do that? For the last 25 years. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's an old saying in punk rock. Yeah. Don't sell out. Sneak in. That's a good one. All right. Yeah. So, 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 um, but in addition to all that, you actually run or ran a gallery. I ran uh, Crew S Gallery for 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, from wow. 2002 through 2012. And, 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 and did the rent finally just go up too much? Uh, it, well, actually, it went up after we left. Um, you know, we, were on a, we had a good contract or whatever, but it just got to the point where I just needed to, uh, I suppose, I was spending too much time behind the com behind the computer, not enough time behind the easel or in front of walls. I, I so can relate to that, like, let me I, tell you. you Running know, a gallery and, is and a full-time job, right? It's, it's a full-time job, and I couldn't, ha I couldn't afford having two full-time jobs anymore. So the so, art career was taken off yeah. in addition to the gallery, because Crew yeah. West was a, the leading uh, graffiti gallery, wouldn't you say? Right, yeah. Or street right. art gallery, yeah. I mean, how would you? You know, when we first started, we were using the term, um, you know, just uh, urban contemporary art. Urban right? contemporary. And, um, but that encompasses, obviously, graffiti art, uh, street art, you know, whatever. But, you know, we, just, we didn't just show graffiti artists. You had like, uh, you had, now wheat pasters count, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we just tried to show the best of what, you know. Of what was going on. What was going on, obviously, with what my taste was <laughs> so you but you started off with graffiti correct absolutely yeah yeah so but were you, were you in school were you the kid who could draw i was always a kid who could the draw the kid who could draw um since i was in school since i was uh you know young kid um i was hey. always the kid who was drawing the the solar si systems for the teacher okay. and the, and the, the <laughs> oh doing the, their job for him <laughs> yeah the, the, the cats and the jack-o'-lanterns for halloween okay. that was that was me so, uh, so yeah. and you're from L.A., right? L.A., born and raised. Where, where'd you grow up? I grew up, uh, I was born in East L.A., grew up in Alhambra, and basically been in San Gabriel Valley my whole life. Now, where, where, Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school at uh, St. Francis High School. St. Francis? Oh, yeah. I Catholic. went to St. Paul. Okay. In Santa Fe Springs. Yeah, I know I think our football at. team, you know, St. Francis is so peaceful. I think St. Paul <laughs> came down with a, you know, he was more of a fire and brimstone kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So did, you, did you even have a football team? We had a... Uh, well, we, yeah, we had a great football team until we showed up. Um, oh, right. Right. <laughs> like, hey! They always well, talked about how great our football team was, but was. While, while I was there, I, it was not, it it was was not, not so great, <laughs> but I played soccer, okay. and we were the first the, uh, first time we were champs. As, really? Uh, CIF? And C not CIF. We, went, we were CIF semifinalists, yeah. but we were league champs, which nice. was the first time that happened. Nice. So, hey! So uh, what, what year? What year were you? I I was there from 80, 85 through eighty nine. So oh, okay. I graduated okay. in eighty nine. Okay, all yeah. right, class yeah. eighty nine. That's of eighty nine. Okay, yeah. so St. Um, Francis. So we're looking at a, a painting here. Yeah. Is this Saint Francis? I see a halo. I see some right. some wings. What is this? So this is a piece that I did actually um, for my first uh, for the first show I was part of at MOLA. Um, Museum of Latin American Museum Art. Museum of Latin American Art. We're so in, in Long Beach, right? In Long Beach. So yep. the first time they opened it up to Chicano artists um, was last year. And, um, you know, I was invited uh, uh, to exhibit. And uh, this was the piece that, that I created. Actually. Is this a mural or is this a... It's a four foot by eight foot uh, panel. Oh, okay. So uh, it's, a, it's a portable art, artwork. Yeah. Okay. It's a uh, spray paint on, on wood panel. Okay. And, um, yeah, so the... the that's what this piece was about, you know, and um, we each got to showcase one piece of art. Um, um, Castro are... de, la Ro de la Rocha from Altamed was the sponsor of the, of the piece and, and all that. So, how many, how many artists were in that show? Uh, you know, I don't remember the final count, but it was... Hmm. It was crowded? It was crowded. It was good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, That's it was. Uh, yeah. Some people call the, my, my favorite thing is L.A. and they just go, yeah, group show hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was about, I want to say that about 20 artists or something. But wow. um, yeah, no, it was great. It was great being part of that that show. And, you know, it's so crazy that we're in a city 
well, that's the that museum's in Long Beach, but still, I've been in Southern California, and having been excluded, having excluding uh, Chicano artists for so many years, and yes. finally to and meanwhile bringing the up door. Latin American artists and paying yeah. to have to ship work in, yeah. import exactly. duty, and all when that there's stuff. There's so much. Here. There's yeah. plenty here, man. So, uh, so it was awesome. It was awesome to be part of that show, you know. Wow. And who's this? So this is a mural in Echo Park um, that I painted of my friend uh, Ediberto Oriol, oh. who's a famous <laughs> photographer yeah, yeah, and artist yeah. here in LA. And for, for um, a half second, I thought it was Tommy Chong. Yeah, it beard. was funny. People drove by, say, "Hey, is that Ronald Reagan?" Hey, is that, <laughs> you know, like I got, <laughs> you know, he looked like a, I guess people, you know, art's uh, subjective, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see what you want to see, but um, yeah, I'm doing this this whole self-funded campaign called uh, Fa uh, Faces LA. Okay. And I'm um, doing murals all over the city, um, not about famous people. You know, it's just about the everyday Angelino, whether it's an artist, well, kid. Well, Ariel Oriol is pretty, he's pretty famous. Well, he's famous in, in, in our within, circle. Within, within a clique. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but you know, most people come to LA uh, from, you know, other countries or other cities looking for celebrities and looking They're for They're looking for Brad Pitt and Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah, yeah. so I'm not well, painting like, them. Well, it's like good luck finding Liz Taylor, but yeah. Angel, there's always Angeline. <laughs> well, there's always a Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, yeah. um, and this is new then, right? Yeah, it's fairly new. Uh, maybe the end of last year, I guess. Okay. Wow. Um, okay. So, so is, is, and, and, and where now, can we see that? It's on Echo Park. Echo right Park there. Avenue. And that's the actual. That's the actual sign. That's the actual oh, sign. That's but the actual yeah, sign. it's a, it's about it. two blocks. What, there, there's a sign here. What's what's? Uh, yeah, it's about two blocks uh, north of Sunset. Okay, I know exactly yeah. where that so, is. So, and yeah. there is a, there's a. Okay, dead end street the, that hits it and I forget what it's yeah, called. Yeah, the, the hipster corridor. Oh yeah, it's 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 hipster but it's still gangster. Uh, hipster but when still I was, gangster. When I was doing the mural, you know, I was getting a permit from the city to do the mural and all that and the, uh, you know, Echo Park 13 came up to me and let me know that they didn't want this mural up and uh -oh. um, so, so I had to had do to my negotiate? street negotiations and how would a street? Now, I, I, you, you owned a gallery, so there's the art. Is it is a gallery negotiation similar to a street negotiation? Um, no, it's very different. Yeah? Uh, yeah, it's very different. What do you what do you what do you have to promise in return for uh, for the the wall in their neighborhood? Well, what ended up happening is I just had a conversation with the guy, and um, you know, found out why he didn't want the mural. Okay. Turned out he didn't his the community didn't like the mural because. Uh, they thought it was uh, too colorful. Too colorful. And um, actually, uh, he said, "He said I didn't want to say this, but it looks gay." Oh! And, and I said, "What's gay about it?" And then he said, "Well, there's a lot of pink." Too much pink. So I said, "So if I take out some of the pink, will it be less gay?" You know? And he's like, "Well, you know, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Just you know, we don't like it." I, you know, everyone's a critic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so what was the end result of this? So he said, you know, the bottom line was, uh, as I kept asking him questions and asking him questions, because he was just trying to threaten me to scare me so I could leave. And I wasn't scared. And I kept talking to him for about, you know, 30 minutes. And finally got to the point where he said, well, look, this, this is, uh, you know, we just don't like the gentrification that's happening in our neighborhood. Okay. And this is a symbol of that, you know. And I said, well, first of all, I'm from L.A. Yeah. The guy I'm painting is from L.A. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm married. He's married. We ain't gay, you know. So you don't okay. have to worry about that part of it. Okay. You know? And he's like, No, no, no. We're not trying. I'm not trying to say that. Whatever. And then I said, Well, what if, what if you could paint something up here? What would it be? You know. And he was like, Wow. You know. I never. No, no one ever asked me that question. So um, we kind of talked about it. And I said, Well, there's another wall around the corner. And if the landlord lets us paint the wall, maybe we'll do something that's a little bit more to what you know your specific neighborhood. Okay. He loved it. Shook my hand said we're cool with it you know and so that's how we negotiated it and did he do the did he do the wall around the corner? we haven't done the other wall yet i, can't I think wait to see it though well i think the landlord might be an issue because <laughs> <laughs> it comes down to if the landlord but I, well, right. basically nice it's it, right. basically the negotiation was you treated him with a little respect and yeah. it went a long way yeah and absolutely that's the, you know, the main thing is that you know when when these gangsters in the neighborhood or whatever you know they are part of the community yes you they know are. and they've been longer they've been there longer than most of these people who are in these areas yes now. so uh you have to treat them with respect and you have to treat them as you would any any other person um in the neighborhood you know right. and they're they are being forced out the gang injunctions have yep. caused a significant rupture in the community yep. and the gangs injunctions are being used as a tool for developers to come in and right. take over the area and yeah. i'm I'm appalled at what's happening in Echo Park. And what people don't realize is when you get rid of the gangs, 
you call because they keep an eye on things in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There's an increase in petty crime. There's an increase in homelessness. There's an yeah. increase in burglaries. It's it's not good for the neighborhood. Is this yeah. the only uh, mural you've painted in in uh, Echo Park? Um, no, I've done more. Um, probably. None over the, the years? Over the years, I've done several, but I don't cool. know. I don't know what's left. Is this a mural? This is also a mural. This is in um, on Sepulveda, just south of Santa Monica Boulevard. On the now, west, that, on that the west area side. is going to be gentrified soon, right? That's, I mean, Sepulveda <laughs> yeah. in Santa Monica, that's... I think right. it's an up-and-coming neighborhood. It's, it, that's an up-and-coming neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're, yeah. you're single-handedly... I, I had to negotiate with Equinox across the street <laughs> to make sure that I could do this mural. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> and they're tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they wanted they wanted more ripped dudes and chicks, and <laughs> we'd like to have a spin cyclist in there. <laughs> who, who is this in the in the in the mural? Uh, the mural is is it's called uh, Intergalactic. Um, it, that's a Beastie Boys song, right? Intergalactic planetary. Thank right? you, yeah. thank you. That's yeah. A lot of my stuff comes from hip hop influence. Um, I call it uh, uh, intergalactic instead of intergalactic. Intergalactic. And um, yeah. and the whole thing was about um, uh, was about the beauty of of L A of L A. You know, and so it's mm -hmm. kind of like Los Angeles. She's a symbol for Los Angeles with her wings, with the halos, with, you know, with the um, the architecture, the everything, and she's holding in her hand, you know, planet. She's in the middle of of this whole solar system, which, you know, in L A. I think you know we're we're kind of in the middle of the whole. We're in the middle of it. We're all we're in the stars. Of it. Every man and woman is a star in LA. Yeah, you know what? If you're Absolutely. not a, if if you're in LA without an ego, I I, I, I that, that I want to meet. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, um, that's kind of what that piece is about. So and is there a difference in paintings in Santa Monica than in painting in Echo Park? Uh oh yeah, there's a big difference. Um, well yeah, I mean you know obviously the the neighborhood, the people that are looking at you and coming up and talking to you are a lot different, and you have you know. Um, like for example, doing this mural, um, you know, I wasn't scared looking over my shoulder all, uh, okay, all, okay, all the okay. time. You know, it was a little, like, little dicier in, in Echo Park. Yeah, Echo Park. You, you, know. you weren't you weren't scared looking over your shoulder at a developer. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Right. You know, like there was literally like a like a red carpet event at that. There is an Equinox cross street. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. kidding. <laughs> and there was a red carpet event with some celebrity thing going on. I'm like. Looking on my shoulder at that. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's a little different. So, but. what's uh, do we have more art to show? I think so. Flip it. Flip it good. Flip it, Nolan. <laughs> Come on, Nolan. You push that button. Who's in the Who's in the Who's in the director's chair today? <laughs> well, at the at the moment we're stuck in. I feel like I'm stuck in Santa Monica traffic. Yeah, that's what you're <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like. So okay, so where where was your first uh, graffiti? Where was my first graffiti? Um, my first graffiti was in uh, underneath bridges, um, you know. In the Yellow River or? Uh, more like around downtown, um, East LA. Um, you know, I did stuff in the Alley River, but not, is not is too this much. a mobile piece or is this a mural? This is a commissioned piece by a collector. The piece is about four feet by nine feet long and it's, oh, wow. it's a wooden panel it's one of four and it's installed um she's a big collector and it's installed above her um dining room table above so, like on the ceiling she has these yeah it has these ceilings that are kind of this weird angle wow and so she commissioned me to do all four sides oh, okay. and um the dining room table is right underneath it and so um you know, it's, I basically did north, south, east, and west, and so this is just one of them. This is the the north piece, wow. and um, and it's installed in there. It's not so you could you could in theory take it out and, and oh yeah yeah it's you can take it out okay you know, if she ever moves or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's a it's an installation. Um, it's a it's a on on panel wood panel. Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, it was it was really cool to to be and in this uh, this this home with this collector. Yeah, is this all spray paint? It's all spray paint. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't use uh, masking tape or stencils or any of that stuff. Um, I'm an old school freehand wow. type wow. of guy. So now you're yeah. one of the few street artists, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. you're one of the few street artists who are in the permanent collection at MoCA, correct? I actually don't have a piece in the permanent collection at MoCA. But, but you I, should. <laughs> at, at, is it at MOLA? I, I, have a, I have a piece 
in the permanent collection at the Getty, and at, I have one at the, at the Smithsonian. Okay. At the, that's bigger than Mocha. Yeah, so, uh, yeah that's, that's like so, ten times bigger than yeah, Mocha. The Twice. The Smithsonian's kind of bitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, actually, the, I guess I guess the artist, graffiti artist that does, his name is Mondo. Mondo. Yeah, and he was an old school artist also, so at, maybe at Mola. At uh, Mocha. At Mocha. At yeah. Mocha. And you're yeah. at the Getty. Yeah, yeah. I was that, part of the uh, the Book of Friends. The um, Book right. of Friends. And Esmoa oh, okay. Scratch. That that was part of the Esmoa Scratch exhibition. Exactly. And the Book of Friends has yeah. it's got um, Prime on Prime did the LA on the cover. Mm -hmm. And we actually for the film that I associate produced Dark Progressivism, we have um, a lot of the artists who were in the in the are in that too. Yeah. yeah. And what do you do for the Smithsonian? So it's funny in the Smithsonian I designed a wine label. And the wine label is part of their wine label art collection. Wow. What, yeah. what wine label? Uh, exactly. Plata wine. Plata? Plata wine. And, wow. Is it good? Um, yeah, it's great wine. Tell it's, us about uh, Plata wine. Where wait. is it from? Yeah. So, so uh, my friend Robert Plata, who's started uh, Plata wine, is, he's out of um, uh, Dos Robles. Is his, his winery's up in Dos Robles. And um, he had this idea. He loves graffiti art. He's a collector. And um, he said, I want to do this label and I want you to design it for me. So I designed his logo and all that kind of stuff. And I did the first, uh, his first um, a Syrah for him. And then um, we also got Chaz Bajorquez to do some awesome. of the other labels. So the whole collection got. Was, was your wine the best tasting wine of the, of the group? Um, I don't know. Yeah, like I don't people know. could go, oh, this is better than Chaz, and Chaz yeah, would yeah, be yeah. like, you can't say that. If, well, wait, maybe it is, <laughs> right? No. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm I'm not a huge wine person, so, okay. so I'm the wrong person to ask. But now I'm excited. You know. you should, Ling's market. Ling's market. We got to start. We got to start stocking wine. this. Now yeah, I'm, I'm filing that away. What, yeah, what are we looking too. back at here? Uh, this is a painting um, from an ex, 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 exhibition I did last year. And uh, this is also spray paint on canvas. It's uh, yeah, roughly about four by eight, four foot by eight, four. four is that by, what, by what kind of character foot. is that? So um, this character, the, the name of this piece, I think, is called um, uh, Mouthful of Caps. And I, oh. I, I use I use these caps, uh, which are the New York uh, graffiti caps that we use on spray paint, or we used to use. Um, kind of as a symbolism of, you know, that graffiti is an American art form, you know? Uh -huh. So whenever you see the little caps, people ask me, why are you put them in your paintings? And I put it in there to remind people that, you know, graffiti art as this movement that we know now, you know, it started in this country. International. Yeah, it's international, but it started in, in and, the United States. And actually in Los Angeles with the beginning of the Placasos mm -hmm. and the, the... Well, there's also train graffitis on trains and, you know, and there was... You know, right. But, but in, in New York. In the 20s in Los Angeles, we were yeah. we were putting up murals. So, well, mural. Well, I'm looking at graffiti is different graffiti, than mural but art. But we were putting up graffiti. So. Uh, you know, because the spray can in the 1920s, yeah. huh? No, no, no. They were using asphalt. They were using like shoe polish. Shoe polish. Stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, but it was mostly back then. It was mostly gang graffiti, which is different from the gang graffiti you're talking about now. Right. Back then, it was you know gangs was a different type of. Yeah. Gangs were different then. Yeah. They made was, movies about them. Yeah, yeah. Family <laughs> was important. I've seen these movies. <laughs> right. yeah. No, but they, and if you go into some of the, the tunnels, oh, yeah. you'll see um, graffiti that was done using Zippo lighters and candle wax. And it's here. It started mm -hmm. in Los Angeles and it migrated. And then anyway. Cool. Yeah. Any of that in the Getty collection? Photos. I don't know. So when you when you are looking at graffiti as an American art form, mm -hmm. and it started uh, it started here in LA. Obviously, it's 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 across the country now. It's international. Is graffiti respected as an American art form internationally? In your experience? Uh, yeah, I think I think more so in other countries than in the U.S. More so than in you the know, US. it's kind of like jazz. You know, it's kind of had, had to go outside the country to be more fans of it out there. Recognized. More fans in Tokyo than you know. Yeah. Miles Davis made more money in Germany than he ever made in New York. That's right. So okay. it's like uh, it's huge all over the world. Um, you know, obviously there's now this whole street art um, terminology that's, you know, it's not exactly what graffiti is, uh, but sometimes people, um, you know, use the different terminology in the same breath, but it's not always the same stuff. You know? were, were you like, OK, you're an original street artist. I mean, you're one of the older mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not talking AARP stuff here, you yeah. know, but, but give it time. Right, right, but, right. Um, but I'm looking at it like there's when new kids come up, how is that? There's like a pecking order. How is that 
You know, when right. you, when you call someone a toy, mm-hmm. right? That's like that's not good. That's not good. So so yeah. so how do you how do you relegate somebody like you're a toy? You're not a toy. Right. Well, well there's certain things that that uh, the toys do. For example, okay. they, <laughs> they they don't have hand styles yet. They're not really experienced with the with with the way they use the can, but also uh, the way they act. For example, going over murals, tagging on churches tagging on uh, on people's homes you know that's all like churches and homes are not allowed not allowed didn't know that but uh, toys will do it oh you know um, you know a big problem we're having right now is that uh, there's a lot of toys who are tagging on murals and tra- tagging on graffiti pieces and, and stuff like that that you know back in the day you know you would have got shanked for something like that wow. you know At um, least. but as time goes on you're not a, you know people grow up but then right. they have to how do you deal with these uh, toys right well what happened is you know I'm, I'm from what i call the second generation of of graffiti artists in la you know like the the, the new york graffiti hip-hop movement type of, of stuff and so um it was passed down to me from the older generation and then we pass it down to the next generation and so forth but this new generation has just got lost because of Instagram, because of social media. They want to put the graffiti up and put it up no matter how ugly it is. No matter it how, is. they just want to get the likes, they want to get the, you it's, know. Ju- it's like that with Cal Arts graduates too. Yeah. They don't care how <laughs> ugly it is. Okay. So, so what are we looking at here? So this is a piece, uh, so I call these characters graffiti spirits. Wow. And what I do is I go around town taking photographs of places where there's generally graffiti in the background. Um, then I'll print it out on canvas or on wood or something, and then I'll paint over it. So the, the black and white figure is painted with acrylic over um, oh, cool. like a G clay, you know? Okay. And yeah. so, um, so they're, they're, they're unique pieces, even though they're, you know, the original concept is a photograph. Um, each painting is, is done uniquely to it's that unique. piece. Yeah. And so I've been doing these for a few years and um, they've been, people are really responding to them. So I'm working on a new series of these that I'm not ready to reveal yet, but I think it's going to be don't, pretty fun. Don't, I don't, we're no yeah. secret, we don't, we're not <laughs> squeezing you for secrets on Modern Art Blitz, we just, right on. We, we, we want you out here. Now, now, when was the first time you had a show that wasn't in the str- on the streets? So my first solo, oh well, well I had my first solo exhibition in 1994. Wow, where? Um, it was a little gallery called Stone Age Gallery on Ooh, Melrose. God, that, oh, I know that, they had a lot of like, Divor- <laughs> like divorced wife art. Really? Yeah, it was like <laughs> bowls and like like ceramics and stuff. It was Stone Age Gallery. Stone Age Gallery. Yeah. Stone Age Gallery. Gallery. yeah, and it was on Melrose, uh, kind of near Crescent Heights, and it was right next to the owner also owned a head shop called uh, 2000 BC. That does uh, help. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so I was the first exhibit I think in that gallery, and I don't know how, I don't know how long that gallery was up for, but they gave me my first shot. And that may be the first, wow. uh, have my first. Wow. So that was on the west side too. That was 90, yeah, you started on the top. Yeah, yeah you started <laughs> so on basically. And, and what are we, is this west. another spirit of graffiti? Yeah, it's another graffiti spirits character. Um, this is a small canvas. This is probably about uh, you know, 20 inches or 24 inches by, by 24. Cool. In that range. Um, so this guy's popping caps, you know, that's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And the cap, um, now the caps can, you can, you can shape the hole in the cap to make different different things, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could, but but uh, we just know where to get them from. You know, nowadays you can just buy them anywhere. Oh, you know? in the old days. Uh, you in the old days we had to like, yeah, we, we do yeah, it by hand. We had to manufacture it at home and, Interesting. Cool. <laughs> you know, know, know where to steal it from, you know, pop it off the, the oven uh, cleaner uh, caps, you know, or the tester cans. Have you benefited overall from the popularity of street art or if you had to do it all over again and, and mm-hmm. you could have just not had of any of that that big part of that movement would you have just said forget it I just want things to be as they were or has it has it actually benefited you and graffiti? Yeah um, I think it's benefited in the, in, in the sense that now people are aware of it and um, you know people want to know what well, what is the street art and where did it come from and all this kind of stuff so in the long run yes I think it benefited and obviously especially in art nothing stays the same you know no, everything okay. everything evolves That's so yeah. mm-hmm. so from graffiti art it had to go to something else for me anyways and so um you know so it's overall there's some negatives obviously with the popularity yeah. and the toys but right. but uh but the flip side is there's it's a net positive yeah i mean like for example you know there was the big um 
uh, Art in the Streets show at MoCA. Okay. And that wouldn't have happened if Would it was still called yeah. Graffiti Art. Right. Exactly. Right? What, uh, were you in the, were you in the, I was not in that were, show. Now, how could they, see, they had a lot of omissions in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And, you, and you obviously were one of them. You're a big one. You've, yeah. you've been on the scene. But, but did you take it in stride? Did you, did you go up and tag the museum? Did you? You know did what? You, uh, um, did, you, did, you, did you fuck Roger Gassman's wife? No, no, no. no nothing <laughs> like that. Nothing like that. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I kind of like boycotted the show when it happened. Okay. Um, I was just, and the reason was that you're having a show, major show in LA, you know, in my backyard. And you got a curator from Baltimore doing it. And you got, you know, you what? got uh, three white guys running the show, number one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, none of them are from LA, yeah. you know? And um, I was like, okay, that's weird. But, but besides that, you know, it's like, there's such a history of artists in LA that it doing was graffiti. They were, they were, I mean, and um, they ignored it. It was very, or, there was a lot of artists that were overlooked and all that. Yeah. And so, you know, I wasn't vocal about it necessarily. Like, in this way, I wasn't like, you know, clamoring down their throats or something that, you know. But what I did do is I, I had my gallery at the time. So I had my own exhibition and it was called No Biters Allowed. Okay. And oh, so awesome. we had our own show and I put all the artists that I thought were authentic, That's cool. real artists, and we did our show. Um, but you know what was funny about that was I got a call from one of the major um, collector groups in LA and they called me and said can you can you give us a tour of LA and of the artists because there's a huge show in MoCA happening we have over 200 collectors on our list none of them know who these artists are Wow so did you do it of course that's and, great. I, and I still do it I still work with this uh, th these guys you know um, so that's 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 one way I think that that there was it was a benefit has, overall has benefited yeah. you know yeah right. so, so let's see how the drawing of man one came out. Wow, wow, wow. Where, wow. where can we see whoa, whoa, some whoa. of your art now, aside nice. from on the streets? Um, when is your next show coming up? So I, I, don't have, let's see, what, I don't have a show coming up necessarily mm -hmm. right now. Um, I'm kind of just working on different commissions awesome. and, and private stuff. I have, a, I have a studio in Lincoln Heights where I bring my collectors and, and show stuff. But uh, right you know, on. I'm just working yeah. on, on you know, more street stuff. I'm doing a mural in Lincoln Heights. Uh, very soon, oh, and cool. that'll be very visible. Great. Well, thanks a lot That's for being great. on Modern right, Art Blitz. I can't wait thank to drive up Echo Park Boulevard. One. Yeah. Thank right you. On. Thanks, man. All right. Sorry, so, let's move on. Yes. That was great. I'm like yeah. buzzing. I know. I'm totally. I got stuck. LA history in me. I got schooled on LA history today. So, <laughs> our next guest needs no introduction, and yet that is part of my job description. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, an icon of Los Angeles art for, let's count the decades now, for five decades. Five decades? Longer than I've been, than she's been alive. Longer than she, the intern, has been alive. Since I was in kindergarten, this man has been on the LA art scene. <laughs> no lie. Mark Stephen Greenfield. But he looks even younger than I do. Five decades? 70s? 70, yeah, okay. 80s, 80s. okay. 90s, 90s. Oh, shit. the O's, <laughs> and the ones. And the ones. Oh, shit. Dang. That's five decades. That is so cool. You make me feel old. Well, you know, you look younger than anybody on the set besides internal Lisa. <laughs> That's true. So uh, let's get to it. We're looking at, is this, do you consider this one of your doodah paintings? No, actually, this is one from the Agungun series. Agungun yeah. series. What is the Agungun? Okay. I did a residency down in Brazil um, a couple years ago uh, on, on the island of Itaparica. And um, they have a ceremony there. It's called Igungun, which actually goes back to an African ceremony where they channel the spirits of ancestors. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, on it, the island of Itaparica, they practice this even more authentically than it's practiced in Africa. Wow. Um, one by one, these agoons will come out, they embody the spirit of an ancestor, and they will be giving blessings. But at the same time, they have this, this, this duality, this other power, this very negative energy. And while I was at the ceremony, there was a Fulbright fellow there, and he slipped me a note, and he said, don't let the agoon touch you. And I said, what's that all about? He said, well, if the agoon touches you, you're marked for death. Oh, great. So I wasn't sure if this was physical death or spiritual death or anything like that. But people have been known to walk out of the ceremony and get hit by lightning. So I took it a little seriously. You know, that's one art opening. I think, you know what, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> so wait, so there was what? something going on at Bergamot. This, I didn't get to your opening. Is this, is this Kimbata? No, no, no. So, so is this, okay, now. So, so I, I have to relate it to the piece. Okay. okay. So when I came back, 
I started taking a look at things in contemporary society that had the same type of duality. Ah. And so I, I did one on, on technology. Technology is this incredible blessing, but at the same time, it comes with at a price because it's a big is, curse. Look at our show. Curse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at medicine. You know, uh. medicine can work miracles, but at the same time, the side effects can kill you. Oh yeah. Yeah, indigestion, sleeplessness. That's half, half the commercial. Is, is <laughs> why not to take something? So then I was looking at police. Okay, and uh -oh. with the recent rash of killings, mm -hmm. you know, the police have been part of. It's it's there's this thing where yes, they protect and serve, but at the same time there's this other side of them the, that can the recent rash of documented killings <laughs> documented yeah, I mean, killings yeah. right. so so um so so you actually worked for the police i worked for the police for you were not a, you years. were not a cop i was an i was a civilian employee you did not have a badge i did not have a badge i did not have a gun no uniform no uniform but oh, you wow. did have art i had art what did you do um, a lot of stuff that I can't talk about. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Talk about it, talk about it, come on, come on. Nobody's watching, I did, come I, did, on. I did public relations material. PR. I did, um, I did, I would hand letter all the certificates for all the graduates, so I knew old English calligraphy. Wow. wow. Um, I would do uh, training manuals. I would do uh, deployments, how you would deploy uh, police officers in the event of a riot. Oh wow. wow, so the, like the diagrams and stuff? I would do stuff for courtrooms, uh, wow. diagrams for courtrooms. Oftentimes, you know, murder scenes, you'd have to say, well, the wall was here and the body was found there and stuff like oh, that. Did you have to go look at them? Well, or you, they give you pictures? No, they give me pictures. Oh, whew, man. But you didn't want to see the pictures. Photo really. Yeah, your pictures are bad <laughs> enough. Oh, pictures boy. are bad enough, right. <laughs> what is it now? Now, why would they want a drawing over the picture? Uh, because when you're talking to a jury, it makes it a lot clearer. Oh, okay. okay. It's Interesting. Like, you know, it's like the I like on Judge Judy where they have the road and the little toy cars to move along. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, so, um, uh, and let's 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 be clear. You're you didn't know Judge. You never worked with Judge Judy. No. No. Okay. No. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so what are we looking at here? Is this more? This is this is one of the other agoons. This is the one that deals with technology. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, when you see these agoons, the costumes that these agoons wear. They're gorgeous, okay? They spend a year work, working on these costumes. They only wear them once. Wow. And then they're destroyed. Wow. But in, in all instances, you will never see the Agoon's face. It will always be covered with beads. In this case, the face is covered with thumb drives. Oh, wow. Um, and then, you know, he's got all the, the accoutrements of technology to the surrounding and stuff like Your that. Your calligraphy around there reminds me of an artist, Mark Toby. Do you, did you ever, do you, do you know this artist? I know this artist. Yeah? Yeah. He was kind of like a contemporary of Jackson Pollock and was, and really right. was one of the pioneers of the all over style where there's not, I mean, obviously you've included this, this, um, this icon in the middle, so mm -hmm. so you know in the painting, but but this all over style. What inspires that? That sort of actually thing? is it's a throwback to automatic writing. Oh, okay. You know the the, the uh, surrealists used to use it in the thirties oh, yeah. and forties. Wow. Uh, it pretty much comes from uh, the subconscious, and I kind of liken it to uh, meditation. Uh, each one of those those marks kind of represents a mantra, if you will, and so. Uh, when I'm working on these things, I actually do get into a different state of consciousness. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like a meditation exercise. It's, it's very much like a meditation. Yeah. So do you ever go and the, oh, hey, I don't have to meditate today. I was working on my art, and, and then that was enough? Actually, uh, no. no? I, I, I want full benefit. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so, so you, you'll, you'll, you'll still do the meditation, meditation too? too? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Can we see the next uh, image? Is if, if they haven't gone on a coffee break. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Yeah, wow. this is this is the agoon that deals with uh, with Medi medicine. Wow. Uh, okay. It's called Pepto Punk Angel. Right, okay. Um, that's so you awesome. know you see all these these uh, prescription bottles all over the place and stuff like that. You see uh, nuclear medicine on his chest. And you see this defibrillator and defibrillators. You know, it's, again, it goes back to that idea. A defibrillator can save your life, but if they don't catch you within the first four minutes, do you really want to be alive? You know? Do you really want it? Yeah, you could be a vegetable. Wow. <laughs> so, oh. You know, so there's that blessing and that curse. Did not thing. know that. Yeah. So, so how long, uh, how old is this piece? Uh, this was done last year. Oh, okay. So this is all, this is your most recent work. Mm -hmm. Now, I saw your show at CAM, mm -hmm. the California African American Museum. Right. Or Africa, is it, are there three A's? Is there art somewhere in there? No, there's no art in there. There's no art in there. It's just the African American <laughs> there's Museum. There's some people that think there should be an art. An there, art there should be, a, there should be a... But you know, the, the mission of the museum is actually twofold. It's both art and history. And history. Yeah. And so, you know, it has to kind of walk this interesting line between both and try to satisfy both constituencies. And it's, it's quite a challenge, actually. So, so um, I, now your show, your retrospective there uh, was pretty thorough. 
Yeah, that was 40 years. 40 years of art. 40 wow. years of art. Or as we say on Modern Art Blitz, five decades. Five decades. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, now what year is, is this from? Uh, this is actually um, last year also. Wow. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that came out of, as a result of the, the retrospective is I started looking at that early work again, and I remembered how much fun I had doing abstraction. Uh-huh. You know, and I said, it's like, why don't I do that anymore? And I just started going down that road again. And it's so liberating in many respects because, you know, you get that motion and that gesture and that, that very spontaneous. If you've ever lived next door to a guitarist, they, especially one with a really loud amp, they'll just sit there and noodle on the guitar all day. And, and it can drive you mad, but, but the, the guitarist will tell you that's the most fun they have playing the right. guitar. And I've always equated that with abstract painting. That a lot of people look at an abstract painting and they just, they, you know, especially American culture, with what? What's it? If it's not about something or worth something, you know, it doesn't have a price tag. I don't know what, you know. Yeah, exactly. but, the, but making the abstract painting for the artist is the most fun part of it all. Yeah. And um, so, so how, how large is this? Is this just a sketch or is this, this a major is, no, painting? No, this, this is a painting. It's only, uh, I guess it's 36 by 36. Oh, okay. And okay. it's actually done with acrylic ink on Duralar. 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 That's, Whoa, Duralar. Whoa, that's a whole new meat. <laughs> Duralar is kind of like a synthetic drafting film. It's synthetic got a lot more plastic in it. Is it legal? It's legal. Yeah? Yeah. You, as long as you don't chop and it up and snort it. it you can't smoke it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're thinking on the same lines there. <laughs> but it's, uh, the thing I like about it, it's, it's, you know, it's translucent, and I can actually paint the back side of it. So all, that, the, all the color is actually coming from the back. Ah, so the light all kind the of... all the line work okay. is on the surface. Oh, interesting. So it's a great combo Yeah, there. so you get really smooth surface. And let's it. see Jackson Pollock do that. Because yeah. he wasn't, you know, Dirty Lar. No? Yeah. no, he was using just the old canvas. That's right. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's keep going on this. Oh, what do we got here? This is, uh, this is called Anger Management Number 1. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it actually came about as a result of the uh, Charleston shooting. Mm -hmm. Oh um, dear. One of the things that I thought about was how, how adept we as a society have, have come to, to manage anger. We were actually good at it. We're actually, you're, you're we've gotten really good we're at really it. We're really good at it? Because like, no, we just go on Twitter and, and I don't rant. know if that, you know, maybe it's a, the mark of too much civilization. I don't know, but we've become very good at it. Because I mean, I was around in 1965 and I know the spark that kicked off the Watts riots. You were, you were in Watts? I was in Los Angeles. You were in Los Angeles yeah. when the Watts riots happened? Right. And so, Ooh. you know, uh, it was one of those, those instances where anger clearly was not managed. What was worse, the Watts riots in 65 or the, the LA riots in, in, uh, in 92? Probably in '92. You think that was a little more? It was yeah, because it's, it was it was the whole city. Because yeah, yeah, it actually it, it wasn't spread contained. Out. It was yeah. not contained, and it was it was really the result. And and you know, well, I think most I, of it turned I, out to be. I have arson, a problem though, right? with this word riot. Oh really? You civil I, unrest? I look at it more as a revolt. Revolt. Yeah. It's you, a revolt. What, wasn't the '92 riots mostly just arson though? A lot, like a lot of no, land, a lot of landlords saying, a lot was, of landlords saying, no. "Hey, time to cash no, in." It was arson and looting. A lot of looting and all the rest of that stuff. Yeah. But it was, it, was, it was born out of a great deal of frustration, you know, a great oh, deal of yeah. pent-up frustration. And in many ways, it's like, you know, I, I kind of look at L.A. as kind of a series of cultural tectonic plates, you know, mm. that are constantly up against each other. Yes. And, you know, at some point, there's a snap, and it happens again. I think that if it were to happen again at this point, though, the city is much more unified than it was. Really? In 92. Wow, so anger management, this is in a way, it's a positive piece. Or is it a positive? It's, 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 is it's, our anger management good? I mean, the I'm fact using, that we're... In this case, I'm using a, 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 a tornado as a metaphor for the feeling that you get, that, that anger that you get. It's a, it's a way of expressing that. One of the other pieces in this series actually is a methane explosion. Wow. Okay. Um, another one is a cartoon fight, you know. A cartoon but fight? A cartoon okay. fight. Well, actually, that's anger mismanagement. Mismanagement. <laughs> and what's, what are we looking at here? This is also from the anger management series. Uh, this is called Badass. Uh, and underneath there, I have the definition for motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> Which a lot of people, you know, it's like they, they throw this word around quite cavalierly, but they don't really understand where it came from. Where did it come from? Uh, it's... It's, it's supposed to describe a vicious, mean, or generally repulsive person. A, okay. a generally repulsive person right. is a motherfucker. Yeah, but there's a second definition to it that okay. everybody skips over. 
and it's actually a compliment in the jazz community. Yes, it is. It's yeah. a compliment. It's a compliment. Like yeah. he was a badass Ass motherfucker. motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> yes. and so there's really no mothers getting laid here. No mothers getting okay, laid here. Just, no. just okay. No. Mom's okay. <laughs> Well, maybe she'd be unless better. She's, unless she's a great, <laughs> if she's a great jazz musician, though. What happens if your mother is a great jazz? Okay, don't get me started. So okay. I'm sitting up there. You know, I'm looking at this. Uh, this this is a photo. The, the, going back to the other one, it's actually from a 19th century ad. An ad from a British publication that was uh, advertising the idea of marital bliss. And I looked at the expression on that face, and I said, it doesn't look blissful. There's something about this that isn't quite right. So there's both this kind of grimace, but there's also this kind of pleasure, frown, and there's a smile. There's just too many emotions going on in this picture. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know. So what was the, the next one? Was a sunburst. The is next one. The next one is the methane explosion. That's anger management number two. Isn't it a methane explosion? Isn't that a fart? Could be. Okay. <laughs> but it's so beautiful. If you light your just because it's okay. it smells bad doesn't mean it's not beautiful. There's a lot of flowers that smell bad that are. I'm defending farts here, but okay. Right. <laughs> no, I just meant the, the, because methane is one of those things that, you know, we, it erupts from the ground as well as from between your cheeks, Matt. Well, you know, uh, not with this couch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, you know, most of uh, Los Angeles has a methane bubble under it, the La Brea Tar Pits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, yeah. you know, so, so they I'm could, waiting for, Mocha, for LACMA to explode at some point. You know, LACMA, <laughs> when they were digging that parking lot out, they found a mastodon. I know. I and then, know. and Govan's like, oh, get the archaeologists in here and get it. You know, I'm thinking it was. I need take... my parking lot. Yeah, he wanted a parking lot more than he wanted to investigate the master. <laughs> Wait till they start the new construction. That's going to be something. Uh, <laughs> well, will they ever, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you know, I once had a meeting with the president of Cal State LA, James Rosser, and he told me that most public construction was actually there was embezzlement going on that you had to micromanage it to make sure there wasn't any embezzlement and i wondered that about michael govan is there going to be a lot of frosting taken off that oh, cake i would i would dare to say yes i i i, I mean you know we're not you know but what if we find a brontosaurus or a saber-toothed tiger what if it blows up and the brontosaurus lands on michael govan okay so tell us about the methane <laughs> explosion <laughs> So, yeah, this is another, it's another uh, way of uh, actually of managing, anger. managing anger. It's a metaphor for how you would feel, wow. the type of explosion that you would like to actually put out there, but you're maybe too civilized. To, to so, as an artist, that you've shown in, in a variety of venues. Hmm. What is your favorite type of venue to show in? Is the institution the best place for your yeah. art? Uh, actually, I like, I like showing in nonprofits. Nonprofits. I like, yeah, I, I, you know, I've never been preoccupied with the idea of selling my work. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why I worked a job. <laughs> you know, it's like you work a job, it's an interesting trade off. It seems so logical, and yet nobody does it. <laughs> no, it's a trade off. It is a trade off. And, you know, I mean, I have nothing but admiration for those friends of mine who are purists, who decide, you know, this is all I'm going to do and stuff like that. But if you, you know, if you really want to be able to, do things without the consideration of the market, then you have to find some sort of way to support yourself and to support the habit. And, 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 the, and the problem really with the market is, at the end of the day, is there all the paintings being made, how much wall space is there, how many houses are there right. that can hold these, these pic pictures on them, how many people have the, the money and the collector bug to want to pursue this thing. Uh, do, now, do you have, do you have patrons that regularly buy? Or, no. or do you, you're, just, you're just hoping that? No. No. Once in a while they get the, the, the once in a while they get I sold three pieces last year. Three pieces. Yeah. You're ahead of you actually you're, you're in the You're ahead of a lot of people, <laughs> trust you're, me. You know what? You're in the one percent. <laughs> <laughs> based on based on the based on Yeah, but you don't know what I sold them for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it don't take much these days. <laughs> Any sales is good sales. Um, so so are are you are you looking at nonprofit like a medium sized nonprofit space as opposed to like an institution? I mean, where do you where do you where's the alpha place? Well, for you know, you? like so much of my experience, my working experience was working with you know um, art centers and nonprofit spaces like that. And I know that there are certain restrictions that are put on them whenever you're working with you know a government entity, but still, uh, I think that in showing in those spaces, there's no real pressure for people to have to buy anything you know when you show in those spaces they don't go in with the idea i'm going to go see mark show god he's going to feel terrible if i don't buy something no you go there because i i want you to see what it is that i've done and maybe it'll speak to you on some level well so so okay as a gallery owner in theory for profit 
I would like to know how do I apply pressure to people when they come into my gallery to buy stuff? Because I'm thinking, I'm open, hey, hey, look, come see the art. I'll, I want to put the squeeze on you now. I didn't realize there was so much pressure. Oh my God, let's don't, don't step in there. He'll make us buy. I want to That's know. why they sell cattle prods. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got to get one of those. I got to get a wallet angled cattle prod. Well, what if we had like girls and boys beautifully muscled and fishnets and scantily clad saying, would you like to buy some art? That's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> Show us the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <not mine. laughs> so, um, so what we have to do, we have to show the sketch. The sketch. That has been sketched of you. Here. Here, Here it comes. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. What do you think? Whoa, send that to my mother. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and, and now, now you're, you're an alumni of Cal State Los Angeles. She's from Cal State Long Beach. So I went to Long Beach too. You went to Long Beach I also? I did my wow. undergraduate there. Undergra so you did a graduate at Cal State LA. Yeah. And undergraduate at Cal State uh, Long Beach. Right. Where'd you go to high school? Went to LA High. LA High. But I spent a little time at Mount Carmel High. Mount Carmel High. Yeah, which no longer exists. And, and, and you're, you're LA native. I was born here, but I was raised, my father was in the service, so I was oh. raised overseas. Okay, so, but you came back for high school? Came back. Yeah. So it was a good childhood? Yeah, somewhat. And then you got, then you got stuck here? Yeah. You got stuck in this dump? <laughs> 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 there's, there's, there's worse places, we know that, I right? Know. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much for being on Modern Art. Thank Let's you very much for having me. Always Pleasure. been a big fan thank of you. Thank you so much. Big fan of your art. Uh, special thanks to, to Mark, obviously. Uh, thanks to Man One. To intern Aliza in the sketcher seat, my lovely co host. Isn't she adorable? Look at this. <laughs> this is like Hollywood, we're talking. We're talking like prime co host material here, okay? <laughs> Johnny Carson does not have anything on me, your host, Matt Gleason. This is Modern Art Blitz. We do this every Sunday, streaming live at 5 p.m. on Dromebox. Dot com, a great website if you love comedy. Eh, okay. And we're archived on youtube.com. It's, it's, it's a website, but you can go to modernartblitz.com to instantly see our feed of great episodes. This was episode 26. We hope you enjoyed it. We do this every Sunday. Hit the tunes!